Unbelievable, guys. What an amazing match. Match of the tournament. Now, if you follow the channel for the predictions and you do not hit the super thanks after that or show some love to the channel after that, then that's why you don't get the good stuff too often these days. Now, listen, what did I tell you? I told you Sacri will cover the spread, even money return. I said Sacri will win at least a set, underdog price, which means Sacri will lose the match 1-2 on the set spread. That's plus 600 for Elena Rabakina to do that. I said this match will go over 21 games, even money return. I said this match will go over two and a half sets, underdog price. I said Elena Rabakina will win the match. And sure enough, that's like six, seven, eight picks out of one scenario. I gave you the whole script for this match. And again, for people that show love to the channel, I appreciate it, but... Now you see why I don't do the studio predictions as much. They take an hour to make and YouTube might pay me $5 if I'm lucky on one of them. Whereas if I talk about the top stars on the tour, someone like Coco, Coco has videos that makes thousands of dollars. Coco's very popular on the channel and the advertisers, they want to support the popular players on the channel. It's as simple as that. So, you know, I have to cater to the demographics, but if you like the predictions and you like those videos, make sure you show love to them and I can give you the numeric locks. There was um one today, Anna Bondar over Tatiana Maria. Uh, that was a lock there. Hope you guys enjoyed that. But this match, a lot of numerology at play. I took the time to calculate it, gave you the whole script for this match. I hope you guys enjoyed that. This was a great match. Seeing Sacri and what David Witt is doing with her career, I think is amazing. But tonight belonged to Elena Rabakina, guys, and that's her coach there. I think she is the by far the mentally toughest player on tour. That came out a little, a little bit weird, but Elena Rabakina is by far one of the toughest players mentally on tour. And her coach, we have to give him credit. Two great coaches tonight coaching and they did an amazing job with their players. But it was amazing seeing Elena Rebecca and Harry get a little bit frustrated. You don't see that too often these days. But she got frustrated here, shanking a shot that could have gave her a match point. And Zachary, right back at right back at her, Elena Rebecca and Zachary said, ball, go that way. <laughs> that was hilarious, guys. Check it out. Maybe a bit too eager on this one. Go that way. Now, that hurt bad because that could have put her in position to to hold there. And David Witt, guys, amazing coach. He coached Venus Williams, longtime coach with Jessica Pagula. He's got a lot of knowledge. And I think if you're a coach nowadays, part of the challenge is motivating your player and giving them, you know, the confidence to do what they can do. Right. And Elena Rabakina wipes her sweat is that's a walk off winner, ladies and gentlemen. She's victorious now. She's going to take on Victoria Azarenka next. The last time they played at Dubai, I covered that match. Uh, it was about to go three. It was scheduled to go three sets, but Victoria had to retire. And I'm a little concerned for Elena Rabakina, though, even though she wipes her sweat, she gets a victory here. She has ankle issues. She has the ankle issue, the shoulders. It seems like it could be bothering her a little bit. She is making a lot of double faults. She has the uh, testineal issues and she's tired and fatigued. So that does concern me. I don't know if I, I don't know if she's going to win this tournament. I would like her to win it. Uh, I think if she gets rest and recovers, I think she might have enough to get past Victoria Azarenka. But I don't I don't see Elena Rebecca. Uh, I just don't see her beating anyone on the other side of that draw. It's going to be very tough for her to beat Ekaterina. It's going to be tough for her to beat Pegula. It's going to be tough for her to beat Danielle Collins, who can just hang in the pocket. Danielle is healthy now, and she's in form. I think she would really put it on Rebecca if they played right now. Now, they've played. They've, they've had some matches that have gone three the last couple matches, but Danielle was not in shape. Danielle is in shape. She's playing for him. And she talked about it yesterday in an interview. She said, yeah, she's, she's played more matches so far than she's played in a long time this year. And she's like, yeah, you know, it just, they, they were just talking about her rhythm. They asked her a question about her rhythm and her form. And she said, yeah, you know, when, you, when you're playing a lot of matches, that comes. 
Danielle Collins looks good. I, I'm just concerned for Rebecca because she talked in the post-match interview about being very tired. And she's got the issues with the, you know, digesting the nutrients. She's got a lot going on there. So, look, Rebecca and the fans, enjoy these moments. Enjoy these wins because we don't know how much longer we may have. I would love to see her play another 15 years. But I don't know if that's going to be possible. Okay? But... It concerns me. I don't know if she can beat anyone on the other side of the draw. I just don't know. It's especially not Pagula. I don't think she beats Pagula. I don't think she beats Danielle Collins right now. Danielle Collins' fastball is just going to be too much for her back. And I don't think she's covering ground good. I don't think she has the energy. Someone like Garcia, she might be able to squeak out Garcia because Garcia is not healthy herself. But Garcia is playing fast and vertically as well. And, um... Ekaterina's playing way too fast. She's striking the ball too fast and too quick. She's got she's got a good rhythm right now. I think she would blast her back and off the court. I mean, Zachary is is good. She's made improvements, but Zachary doesn't have the fast ball that those other players have. Her back and is not going to be able to cover the ground against those type of players. But let's enjoy the win, guys. She gets a big win. The ladies um, shake at the net. And again, we're back in another classy interview. But I'm concerned about the interview. She said she's really tired and. If a player tells you they're really tired, then trust me, they're really tired. But again, she's got to improve the double faults. But I think she mentally she came through and she got the job done. But again, guys, hit the super thing. Show some love. I gave you guys a ton of picks in this match, right? Zachary to cover the spread. Zachary to win a set. Elena Rabakina to win the match. Elena Rabakina to win 2-1. We got the total over, the set over. Elena Rabakina to win 2-1 was plus 600. Come on, guys. Show some love. Hit the super thanks. Enjoy the picks. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. The race of the finals is heating up. Coco's number five. We got Ostapenko number six. Now, Ostapenko, I agree with you. We need to go back to line judges. This electronic line system is horrible. A lot of missed calls in this match as well. Uh, number seven is Polini. I would love to see her make the WTA finals. But of all the ladies right now, I don't know if Martyrs are going to hold on. I don't know if Jasmine's going to hold on. And I don't know if Queenman's going to hold on. I think those three might be bounced out of there. And um, what about Yastremka? She bounced out. She fell out of the top eight. Navarro's making a move. But of the ladies here in the current top eight, I think Jasmine might be the one with the best chance to hang on. Queenman does not look good. But tennis in a minute. Get your popcorn, guys. A lot of tennis tomorrow. Stay tuned. We'll be back.